This week on the Gadget Show Web TV, Dion's been transferring her vinyl to MP3. And John's getting to grips with Play TV for the PS3. Plus, all the latest in Gadget Tech news. Welcome to the Gadget Show Web TV. I'm John Bentley. And I'm Dion South. Now, if, like me, you've got loads of records sat up in your loft gathering dust, then stay tuned, because later I'll show you how to convert them to MP3 so you can get them onto your digital music players. But first, I've been trying out this new device from Sony, their Play TV. Sony's new Play TV is a little black plastic box that turns your PlayStation 3 into a personal video recorder for free view signals. PlayStation 3 can already uh, do things like uh, play DVDs, Blu-ray discs, CDs, Super Audio CDs. It uh, already has a web browser. You, obviously, you can already play games on it. So, arguably, this is all that's required to turn the thing into a fully sort of multimedia device in one box. But is it disappointing or is it great? At least it's easy to set up. You put your normal TV arrow into the socket in the back, like so, and then using the supplied USB cable, you actually connect it to the PS3, which leaves you with a rather untidy cable arrangement around the front, but never mind. And then after a bit of software installation and firmware upgrading, you'll soon find this Play TV added to your PS3 interface. And just as with any normal Freeview receiver, you have to go through an auto installation process where it searches for various channels, which may be your second disappointment of the day, frankly, because I first used this in a bit of a marginal signal area where I can normally pick up most of the Freeview stations, but on this I could only pick up 11 and just one radio station, uh, which is frankly a bit disappointing. So if you live in a, in a marginal Freeview area, this well could not be for you. However, what you will be able to revel in is the superb quality of the high-definition interface, because this basically gives you the full 1080p if your TV supports it. It's very nice to be able to run through this here. That's the basic home menu. and the actual electronic program guide is all very, very good. And you can quickly uh, skim through the various channels, on now and on next, which is very handy. And there's a search function as well, so you can uh, find and record particular programs. Play TV upscales the Freeview signal to the best HD standard your TV can support. And uh, considering the basic quality of the Freeview signal, it actually does a pretty good job of smoothing out the pixels. And Vitally for me, it also records the programs automatically into a buffer so you can do instant rewind. And you'll notice I can control it with the PS3 controller, which takes a bit of getting used to, but if you are used to PS3 controllers, you'll probably find it all quite logical. There's an alternative. You can actually use Sony's or standard sort of Blu-ray control. To test the Play TV further, I left the house and found a Wi-Fi hotspot. A really exciting sounding feature is that uh, Play TV integrates with the PS3's remote play facility, which means you can use Sony's PlayStation Portable using its Wi-Fi to access your Play TV box wherever you are in the world. Well, at least that's the theory. I'm in a Wi-Fi hotspot now. I've logged in through my PlayStation account, and all I get is a connection error has occurred. So in my experience at least, and I've tried this in a number of Wi-Fi hotspots now, it doesn't seem to work at all, at least not reliably. Other aspects of the PSP integration are quite a disappointment too. For example, there was a lot of talk before the launch of Play TV that you'd be able to record programs onto your PS3 and easily transfer them onto the PSP, say for watching on the train the next day. But quoting legal and copyright reasons, Sony have chosen to disable this feature, which I think is really disappointing. And the disappointments continue because Play TV falls behind the latest Freeview boxes in quite a number of areas. There's no series record facility, there's no card slot, so you can't upgrade to premium services like Satanta if you want to. And it'll also only record one program while you watch another. The second tuner isn't for recording, which is a bit of a nuisance. And then there's the size of the hard drive. The latest Freeview boxes have up to 320 gigabytes of storage. Compared to that, the hard drives in most PSPs look rather puny. So, overall, Play TVs are a bit, of a, a bit of a niche product, really. I think most people are probably better off investing in a fairly cheap Freeview PVR. It'll have more facilities and it'll be hardly any more expensive than the Play TV box. 
I must say I'm really disappointed with this. I was looking forward to using it on the go with my PSP. And they certainly have a history of not developing the PSP, not exploiting its potential. I mean, why didn't they record on those little UMD discs that go into the back? I don't know. And why haven't they developed a keyboard yet? Indeed. What's the matter with these people? They're definitely missing a trick. Mm. Right, now it's time for the news. Right, first up, Xbox have finally announced the release date for its much-anticipated dashboard revamp, and they're calling it the new Xbox experience. It's available from the 19th of November and includes what they claim to be an easier layout for navigation, and also has Wii-like avatars that you can customise and use as your game face throughout the games on new Xbox experience. But unlike the Wii, it's got more features so you can make them more personal to yourself. A great way to use the avatars is in the Xbox Live Party, which allows you to create a virtual party on your television and you can invite up to seven of your avatar friends. You can live chat whilst playing games, share photos in real time and entertain your friends from all around the world. Mm. And it's not the only news about the Xbox 360 this week because rumour has it that Microsoft has commissioned Toshiba and Samsung to come up with an external Blu-ray drive for the Xbox. Now, if true, this is a major vault fast for Microsoft, who so far refused to allow Blu-ray anywhere near their games console. That's because they supported the losing HD DVD side in that particular format war, and you can only get HD DVD drives for the console, uh, which, of course, leaves Xbox users starved of the latest high definition content. Now, if these rumours are true, the drive will appear either in the run-up to Christmas or after CES 2009 early in the new year. And it's expected to be at a very reasonable price of between $100 and $150, which means that an Xbox 360 plus the drive will still be cheaper than Sony's PS3. The BBC iPlayer is now going portable because the BBC are planning on making their iPlayer downloads available on your portable media players. Now, as long as your media players support Windows Media Protected content, you can download it and watch it. So far, this service has been tested on the Sony Walkman ENS series, the Arcos 605 Wi-Fi, and of course, the Nokia N96. Mm. Now, we've seen eight megapixel camera phones from Sony, Ericsson, and Samsung. Now it's LG's turn with the KC780. It's a slider and it's set to go on sale in November. And as well as that 8 megapixel camera, it's got lots of other camera-like features. It's uh, got smile and face detection, a maximum ISO sensitivity of 1600. It's got image stabilization and a 30 frames per second video mode. You can also hook it up to your PC and use it as a webcam, which is great. Mm, which is extremely unusual, really. The question is, though, is it actually good enough to take the place of your compact camera? Well, I think the only way we're really going to find out is if we get one in and test it. Now it's time for one of Dion's how-tos, guides that help you get the most from your gadgets. Yes, and this week I'll be showing you how to get your treasured vinyl collection onto your MP3 players. By now, most of us know how to fill our MP3 players with music from CDs or the internet. But what if some of your favourite tracks are hidden in the loft on vinyl? I've got one of my favourite records here, none other than Kylie Minogue's I Should Be So Lucky, and I'm desperate to get it onto my MP3 player, but I don't want to have to buy it again on CD or off the internet. Here's the Gadget Show guide to transferring your vinyl to MP3. First up, you'll need a record player. Now, I don't have an old one knocking around, so I'm using this Newmark's TTI. It costs just under 150 quid and plugs straight into your computer via USB. It also has another neat feature. If your MP3 player of choice happens to be an iPod, you can pop it directly into this dock here and it will allow you to transfer your music directly onto it. Now, if you already have a record player at home, you can use that too, because most come with phono outputs like this. Just connect it to the line input on your PC using a 3.5mm jack to phono adapter, which are available from most good electrical stores. You just plug it in and you can transfer audio directly from your record player onto your computer. Once you're all plugged in, you just need to load the software. In this case, I'm using software called Audacity, which is available as a free download and runs on both Mac and PC. It converts the music from your records into digital music files, saving them as MP3s ready to put on your MP3 player. So now all that's left to do is hit record on your software, set your vinyl playing, and once it starts, you'll see the recording appear in the main timeline. If recording an album, the software has a silence finder function which enables you to separate the tracks. You just need to wait until your album or 7 inch is finished and hit stop. Label the tracks and choose a place to save the album. You now have the freedom to transfer your new MP3 files over to Windows Media Player or iTunes and put them onto your MP3 player or burn them onto a CD. 
So now you can listen to your classic vinyl wherever you go. That's brilliant. That's exactly how I do it, you know. I actually mean, love that programme, Audacity. It's so convenient. Yeah, it was really easy to do and it was fun listening to all those old records again. You know, vinyl's got this amazing sound, though, I think. I mean, actually, the sound of a traditional vinyl record on a turntable is very fruity, you know. I mean, you don't want to throw your old vinyl records away just because you've transferred them. No, by all means, you shouldn't throw them away. But if you put them on your MP3 player, it means you're not playing them all the time and they're not going to get scratched. Ah, yes, because some of them are quite valuable. And also, some of them you actually can't get anymore in any form other than vinyl. I mean, Agnes Burnell, Father's Lying Dead on the Ironing Board. She wasn't on iTunes last time I looked. My favourite recording of Mozart's Requiem with Daniel Barenboim conducting on EMI from 1973. That was definitely not on iTunes. On that note, <laughs> that's all we've got time for this week. Coming up on next week's show... John's testing the latest computer with touchscreen capabilities, the HP TouchSmart. And Dion will be showing you how to transfer your DVDs to your personal media player. See you then.